Hey kids, it's Justin James and Justin Complains looking at Beastie Seer. I'll say that again, Beastie Seer. It means Beastier Destroyer. Now, what does that mean? My first thought when I first heard the name of the animal uh, was, is it Latin or Greek? It didn't sound like either. It turns out it's not. It's a Navajo name. So this animal is found in the Kirkland Formation of New Mexico, northwest New Mexico, about 75 to 74 million years ago, right? And so the Navajo uh, name Bistahivir means the place of the adobe, which also could be translated in some parts to the crane, because there's these rock structures there that look like, like, like they're tall, narrow, they have a rock on top like a crane's head. So it's kind of cool there, which is why if you want to be a paleontologist, you must understand not just dinosaurs, but geography, but linguistics, like language, uh, translation, those are all very important things. Sometimes I can hear an animal's name and go, oh, it must be this kind of dinosaur because of the name components. Anyway, so the same was applied. We have our uh, oldest model here, younger one here. This is a 2014 Collect A. And so, uh, again, Collect A, I like the company a lot because every year we get T-Rex, Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Brachiosaurus, some Dromaeus, a raptor, Velociraptor from most of the companies. And Collect A always makes a like, lesser known specimen, so I was super quick to grab this guy up back then. So... Uh, they found on the animal that I'm aware of, this, out of the skull and one rib by the hips. And so the, the rest of this, you said, well, how do you know what it looks like? It's a Tyrannosaur, it's about 30 feet long. Given where it sits in the fossil record, the time scale, it's, and it, it kind of fits in where we see that in the early Cretaceous, smaller Tyrannosaurs, late in Cretaceous, we have the bigger, like T-Rex itself. So this, it makes sense in its alignment. But I also want to show off the Jurassic World one, and again, I did have camera problems earlier, so I kind of already cut it with the official scissors of Jurassic James. But here's the thing, uh, there's the figure, and I, I know when I did my Sino Tyrannus video, I forgot the capture gear, and I think one of you told me that in the comments. So this is, um, and if you know, um, one, I have it this time, and two, my wife found out, and she went and got me another Sino Tyrannus, so I have two of them, and one of them has a gear, so I'm covered. Uh, this, make sure I'm correct. Over the back. Okay, so so basically, you kind of put this on like this, and it's like the when the Jurassic World Raptors were running, they had the, the equipment on their head. See the camera. It's kind of like that. There's a little camera right there. I, I don't really care for, about that, but I have it, so I paid for it, right? So here's the thing. So this animal again, we only found the skull and like one rib here. One thing to point out too is that there's two buttons on the figure right here and here, and the buttons, uh, this this quills do that, and then the head just like a head bob. Uh, I do like the posture of the animal, the fact that most of our toys or figures have like this kind of upright stance. This guy is doing kind of a crouching position, that's really neat. I like the fact that the hands, uh, and again it's the same on both figures, they're palm to palm. So again, dinosaurs, predator dinosaurs lose their fingers going in like this. And so raptors and allosaurs have this, and then tyrannosaurs have that, well, maybe a middle finger nubbin. But they have these two figures here, and they are palm to palm. They both show that very well. This one has really big feet because of engineering, but it would balance better. There's a company called Beast in the Metazoic. So if you're a collector and you want um, not quite, I mean, PNSO is like the highest, I think, to me. But right below that, or near to that, uh, are the it's a Beast in the Metazoic. They have a lot of figures. I have never bought any of them. They're neat. I like them. It's just that they're more pricey, and I'm doing, you know, <laughs> you know room. So... They have a Beast Behavior Sear, and it has a mount like this. So the difference between them is like, kind of like a high-end like action figure. You, you, know, you buy a Captain America figure like that big, and it has multiple hands and faces and all that. Their dinosaurs will have multiple feet and everything, too. So um, that's really cool to look into, and I, I, I have not bought any. I'm looking into it at some point. But if you're looking for another figure that's bigger than this, that's really accurate. That's a good choice. It's, it's a black and red um, animal. <coughs> Excuse me. And so... Uh, Anyway, looking at this guy, uh, mentioning that we found only the head and one rib before the hips, uh, this is entirely made up. We do know the earlier Tyrannosaurs and the earlier Cretaceous, about 120, 110 million years ago, had feathers. They were covered in like a downing. Uh, we, we don't have evidence of the later Tyrannosaurs, like T-Rex, having feathers per se. So it's, you know, it's a pretty good guess. This guy is 30 feet long, so that's, that's what we'd expect as the Tyrannosaurs, or the family's getting bigger. Uh, so that's kind of, a, it kind of fits right in that little spot right there. It's really nice. Uh, as far as all the spikes and choppages here, it's all create, you know, creation, the, the designers. There's like, hey, skin texture, we don't have that information. But I will point out that the toes, there's three toes in the front, a duke on the side. I like that I like that a lot. And as far as the environment goes, it's again, the Kirkland Formation, 74.4, 75.4 million years ago. 
we have in the Jur Jurassic World line the Pentaceratops and the Papo Pentaceratops. So the reason I put them here side by side, not to scale, is that these animals are contemporaries. And it's really important to me. I know, you, I, know I, I harp on this a lot, but you know, if you look at New Mexico Square, in the top left-hand corner we have uh, essentially this, these guys. Just like right next to that is like Ghost Ranch. And that's the Triassic period. That's like 225 million years ago. So you have the Triassic period, 225, and a 75 million year old site, like near each other, roughly near each other. And so that's why it's important for me to just explain how the rock layers are always being uplifted and turned and melted and all that. And so to have animals that are the exact same place at the exact same time is really cool to me. And if you want to know more about this, I told you before in many videos, um, I have my website with a link below. You can see all my critters and how they're classified by like mammals and reptiles and different subgroups. And then I have a new section I built where it's a time scale. And I have a link to that too. And you can click on the time scale, you'll see like the Permian. You'll click on that and you'll see North America, uh, Asia, different part times and what animals live at those different times. So again, these guys are contemporaries. They're found together, which is why you'll see pictures of this, this, these two together fighting each other or hunting one of you know. So that's really important. Another animal found in this area is the Parasaurolophus. This is a Jurassic World one. Here is a Batan, B-A-T-T-A-N. Uh, now this is a walkery. That's a species. There's multiple species of, of many dinosaurs. And so this guy is not the same species found there, but it's still a Parasaurolophus. So it's, it's rep representative of that. And in some localities, uh, there's a possibility that Alamosaurus is there. And Alamosaurus is a titanosaur, a sauropod. This is the only one I can find on the market. And so, and also note, side note, as a Texan, I should tell, the, tell you this, it's not named after the Alamo of the Texas history in Alamo. It's from the Alamo Formation, basically. And so the idea is that um, this guy, you know, one of the last sauropods in North America, so it's kind of a big deal. But in the art, you'll see these three together. And again, this is not the scale. These are, these are all different companies. So uh, these are closer to scale, if you want to look at that image right there, right? Now, moving forward, I will look at two things. One, I'm going to explain this guy with his Jurassic World compatriots and use this guy to explain the actual evolution of the animal. So there's two more sections. First and foremost, with this guy. Uh, he is living 75 million years ago in New Mexico, 66 million years ago in New England, you know, like, I forgot he roars. Uh, so this guy is found, you know, a little later. This guy is a contemporary of T-Rex, the very end of the Cretaceous period. So if we're looking at our timeline, these guys, this is West Coast, and this is East Coast, and this guy's a little earlier. And Albertosaurus would be somewhat of a contemporary to this guy, but northern, so upper Alberta, Canada, the name implies. And fun fact, uh, Albertosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex were both named in 1905 in the exact same paper, but because Tyrannosaurus Rex was earlier in the paper, the family name was Tyrannosaur, but to say that Osborne wrote Albertosaurus first, and then Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurine would be the name of the Tyrannosaur family, which is kind of interesting, that little, that little history bit. Uh, these are North American species, right? If you go to Asia, you have Tarbosaurus right here, so d around the same time as these guys, but different area. And of course, in the Jurassic World line, we have a few more. There's Sino Tyrannus, who's found in Liaoning, China, who's way earlier, who were, th were there 70 million years ago. He's like a over 100 million years ago, 110, 115. And other examples of what's in the Jurassic World line. Oh, I missed this guy. Uh, uh, Moros, which is will be between them in, in North America. And Elia Ramus, which I had some video on this guy. And this guy, actually I have a video on all of these guys, I believe, already. Um, Asia again. And there's one more. Oh, pro, pro, uh, Protoceratus, which is like Jurassic. So these are the Jurassic World Tyrannosaurs. And we're seeing this trend. And what's going on with this little guy is one, I think I think the specimen they found was possibly a juvenile, which is why it's so much smaller. But... These, these guys were relatively a certain size. There were other predators that were larger in North America, and when they died out, that's when they took over, right? So that's kind of the high point of this North, oh, actually, North America, and these are Asian. Actually, no, he's England. This is from Asia, so there we go. So, why, why is that, so how does this fit in, in the bigger picture? Let's, let's figure this out. So I know that I normally do time skills incorrectly here, you're looking this way, so this is your right to left. So here's what we're going to do. The Tyrannosaur family in the last 
I'd say 20 years, has been really been rethought, revamped, rebuilt. And so looking, using our, our there he is, there he is right there. So here's a more uh, scientific view of that. Uh, yes, yes, we're all falling over, yes. Uh, so the earliest, or one of the earliest things we have, and again, there's more to the story, but I can only report the toys that are here. You know. So the earliest Tyrannosaur ancestor, or one of the ones we recognize is Guanlong in China. And Guanlong is right here. This is a safari figure, 2010. And so I remember when I first discovered it, it was a really big deal. In the Jurassic, we have... Now, I have the Jurassic World Proceratosaurus. And the reason it's called Proceratosaurus is that these finest animals, these horns of his nose, they go, oh, Ceratosaurus is found in the late Jurassic of America. It has a nose horn, so this must be his ancestor. They were wrong. It's considered now to be a part of the Tyrannosaur group, early Tyrannosaur group. Also say early or basal. And we don't say uh, what's word, primitive in science, usually, because primitive... It's like a judgy kind of... Okay, so the idea that basal means that it has the earliest traits we can tie to a group, essentially. Uh, that... Because primitive means, like, it, it, it looks at it as if, okay, well, this guy is primitive because you're comparing it to, a, like, a T-Rex. Well, that's not... You know, I mean, when it lived, there was no... Like, the idea of T-Rex wasn't a thing. And so it was this advanced animal its own right. But when you compare it to its ancestors, that's when you look at that way. So basal is used, usually. So, so uh, Proceratus is... It's, this figure is a... Two thousand and eleven. Collect A. Now I like this, this the way it looks, the texture and everything, but the the feet are too small. Well they're they're scientifically accurately in size, but the tail is way too small. So it can't stand. So I'm gonna leave this lay it there, which is it's my in my opinion, my most perfect example of Proceratus, but it can't stand up, which is really annoying. So that is also Jurassic. Now what we're seeing in in the uh, early Cretaceous, we have several things. First and foremost we have Delong, the Emperor's Dragon, and then we have Euteranus, which is the uh, the one the, the largest feathered dinosaur known. I think it's like thirty feet long, and these are from China, Liming, China, which is right north of North Korea. And so these guys are showing the transverse are pretty small, have large three figure hands. Uh, also, we have in England a animal called Euteranus, no, Eotranus. And so that will come and play. I'm, in about two videos, I'm going to do one on Orca Raptor. And that guy's like an interesting player. And so that's what we're seeing in the kind of like early Cretaceous Tyrannosaurs, both Asia and Europe, right? And then when we get to North America and Asia, in general, the Tyrannosaur family, we can tell, from what we can tell, started in Asia and, was, and it would move to North America. So in some ways, the great American T Rex is a Chinese export. That's a, a dad joke, kids. So, in Asia, we have, again, I have the Jurassic World Tarbosaurus, and here's the actual, like, the better, this is the Collect A, I believe Collect A 20, 2009 Tarbosaurus, right here. And then we have the Jurassic World, I know you're here, I just saw you, Aliaramus here. And so, this is a, I think Collect A as well. Again, they're making these angel figures. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is the yeah, collect a twenty two thousand eight Elioramus, and I've done a video on both these species already. And so there's a Jurassic World version. Here's that one. So these are in Asia, and the Asian Tyrannosaurs, by com on average, by comparison, have more narrow snouts, whereas the, whereas the North American Tyrannosaurs have bigger, more crushing snouts. You say, well, why? Uh, one of the hypotheses is that the horned dinosaurs, the Ceratopsians, these guys. Uh, with the big horns, all of them were found in North America, except for like two species. One for sure, maybe Sinoceratops, and possibly one other, they have horns. The rest of them are protoceratops, proto saying no horned, quote, horned dinosaurs, right? So there was a pressure for North American Tyrannosaurus to have a bigger crush, crushing bite, right? Because of their prey. Now, what we are now looking at Lake Cretaceous near Asia, but looking at North America, that's where Bishahivasaur. And I had trouble saying this guy's name. This is a collect a a Thernex, twenty sixteen. So it's another Tyrannosaur on the same time and same same size. These thirty foot Tyrannosaurs, and then as we get to the more in Cretaceous, it ends with T Rex. It's the last Tyrannosaurus Rex or Tyrannosaur uh, before it, and was Despletosaurus, and it's also Albertosaurus, which Jurassic World 
had an Alberta had two Alberta source figures. I did a video on those guys right here, and finally there's a Gorgosaurus here, and so these are around the same as the Campanian. So the Campanian is a very rich dinosaur time. What I mean is that there's a lot of animals um, in North America, particularly, and one of the hypotheses why is that that, that North America is, I keep mentioning it all the time it was divided in half by an inland sea called the uh, Great Western Interior Seaway. There's only in America can you have a name that dramatic. Um, Great Western Interior, or the Zuni Sea, sometimes called in, in geology, in some geology circles. So the idea is that we see, and they're not all the scale for the most part, but this guy is he kind of leading into the larger Tyrannosaurus. I'm not saying he's a direct ancestor of T-Rex. I'm just saying that, that the, the features we see in Tyrannosaurus Rex and its, uh, its you know, the Spleosaurus, Robertosaurus, Gorgosaurus, the ones we know more, or ref research longer, uh, these guys, we see these traits in this guy earlier on. So it's, and that, that upswing towards that lineage, right? Now, you're looking at this thing, what's, what's the big deal? And my only analogy that I, I forgot to mention earlier for the setup, because I'm going over, like, lots of information, and I have it all organized one way, and I start talking, and it just comes out different, is that, uh, there's these guys is that to give you an idea of comparison or how difficult or interesting this is. Difficult or interesting, that's the way of putting it. Uh, this is, I'm going to explain to you something that you are maybe more familiar with, uh, called Cats. Not the play or the movie, but actually the animal. So this is Panthera leo and Panthera tigris, but you know them as the lion and tiger. Uh, so in Panthera genus, we have also, you know, we have leopards and I believe she does, if I remember correctly. So these guys, if you look at them, I'm obviously, obviously, if someone put a cheetah in front of you or a tiger, you're like, oh yeah, that stripes and spots them up. Uh, leopard and le jaguar are a little bit more complex. But in general, you have an idea. But if you look at your skeletons, they're very similar animals. They look very similar, and they're just different sizes. And, and so if you don't know the proper, the anatomy of the animal, I mean, yeah, we say, oh, tigers are in Asia and lions are in Africa. Well, no, but lions were in Asia too, and tigers you know, had a broader range as well. Lions were in North America, not mountain lions, actual panthera lions. And in Europe, so we look at the, we have the current geography as well. It changed over time, and so that's one group of cats. The other group you may be or may be familiar with are felids, which is a mountain lion. Which means the mountain lion, although me name a lion, is closer related to a bobcat or a ocelot, or if you have a pet cat in your house, your felid is closer to those guys than it is this guy. And so what you're saying, and what so the idea is that if you look at a mountain lion and you look at a normal, like a Panthera lion, that whatever you see is similar is what we call, I mean, they have, they share a common ancestor, but it's really convergent evolution that being a bigger tan thing makes you hunt better. But as far as evolution goes, they're separate groups. So keep that same idea in mind with these Tyrannosaurus. And the reason they're, they're, we're, there's a lot of debate is that we have full lion and tiger skeletons and leopard and all that thing and, and ocelots and we can compare them. And we have living ones with skin we can see. With these Tyrannosaurs, we have, I mean, obviously Tyrannosaurus rex is pretty well known, but many Tyrannosaurs are fragmented, they are separated by time and space, and so paleontologists are looking at these bones here and saying, well, what features are here and there to determine this family or not? And we see Tyrannosaurs being in North America first, and the Badlands are huge and bulky, and now we're going to Asia and seeing very thin, slender Tyrannosaurs and faster Tyrannosaurs, and we're seeing them in these other groups too, and so that's why it's not as clear. You may see a paper or a video or something saying this one thing, and like five years later, go actually we found out this because they'll look at they'll find more of an animal and go I'll look at this feature and the jaw and compare it to that one we already know, and that's why they're related or not. And so that's why I'm going to mention this in an orca raptor video. But the uh, e Eotyrannus has a, has had a, it's been like jerked around a lot because it's like well where should it fit in because it's not a as derived as a Tyrannosaurus rex. And there's other groups that are coming up that look similar to Tyrannosaurus or any conversion to them too. So anyway, that's, I'm going into a, a black hole spiral. And so I'm going to stop talking about this now. But in general, your, your Bashir, so I, I mean, even though the figure is not super accurate as far as like this, this situation, um, I get that the toy maker who is trying to make something different, and, which I appreciate, but also, you know, not like, like everyone else. To me, just a different, I mean, look at the Tyrannosaurus, just different colors are cool. But... I mean, I get it. They're, they're adding new features for kids. These are kids' toys. Uh, as far as the science one goes, either up here, I would say get the Collect A 2014, or I would say get, if you can afford it, get the uh, the piece of Metazoic. That's a pretty good model, too. Very, that one's even more accurate than this one, actually. So 
Uh, that being said, I'll see you guys later, and I'll, I'll, I think next week we're doing uh, Regalia Ceratops, which is a whole thing itself. I'm looking forward to that, actually. Uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, see you later. Thank you. Oh, no. Okay. Good.